a trip? What? In this rolling earthquake? You got the ice? Yeah, all wrapped up in sawdust. Come on, get these barrels unloaded. I gotta be in Buffalo by one o'clock. One o'clock? That'll be moving some. I've been moving some all this trip. Left New York Tuesday, boat to Albany, trained Auburn by wagon to Geneva last night, then I caught up with this wood burner. 450 miles in two days? Traveling. This way, Maryland Express. Hey! Ah, did you get my wife's corset? Hey, yeah, Pat, I guess he's a holder. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a letter for you, Harry, from that pretty girl in Syracuse. I hope it's worth six cents. If he don't want it, I'll bid seven. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one for you, Mrs. Fogg. Looks like it's from Lou. Yeah. Here, he's doing all right. Yes, he is, thanks. Hey, don't forget that mail express for Buffalo, Bart. Out of the sea. Marshal? Yeah? I'm supposed to be the postmaster in this town, ain't I? That's right. Well, all I get is three letters. Don't gun it. That expressman is interfering with the government mail. He's breaking the law, that's what. And I demand his arrest. Got to have grounds to make an arrest. Grounds? Look here. The government has a monopoly on the mail. That's so, ain't it? That's right. That fellow's operating without a license. He's diverting money from the government. And it's your plain duty to stop it, Sam. I guess you're right. I know I'm right. Come on. Ramsey. Hold on there, Ramsey. Get down off that way. You're under arrest. Ain't he? He sure is. Arrest? What for? You're competing with the government mail service. Why, we're not competing. We're taking over the mail service. By degrees. <laughs> that's a good thing, too. Why, he only charges six cents and the government 25. And we get them quicker. Lots quicker. Why, my sister had three kids. Before I know she was married. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do your duty, Marshal? You better come down from there, Ramsey. I'm sorry, Marshal. I haven't time to get arrested today. I've got to cover 30 miles to Buffalo by 1 o'clock. See me some other time. Then I'll come up and get you. I'm sorry, Marshal. No passengers. This is an express. <laughs> Buffalo? You bet I am. You mind telling the livery we're broken down and sent out another carriage? You bet I will. If... Wait, please. Justine. Surely you're not going to abandon us in this, this wilderness. Can't we ride with you into Buffalo? Why? Yes, of course. I'd be only too pleased, only I... Mother! I'd be delighted to be of service to you, ma'am. The only trouble is I don't think you'd be very comfortable in that rattling old wagon. Oh, it'll be fun. I've never ridden in a wagon before. Mother, this gentleman has kindly offered to drive us into Buffalo. Hardly sounds intrinsic. Is the wagon safe, young man? Well, it's given good service for a number of years, ma'am, but... Can't guarantee you'll be comfortable. No, I suppose not. Oh, do come, Mother. It'll be an adventure. Hmm. Allow me. I, uh, I think you better sit on the express box. How delightful. Uh, allow me, ma'am. No, thank you. I can manage quite well. You're being very kind. Not at all. Personally, I think it would be a great success. But the idea of an overland express to St. Louis is preposterous, Wells. Why don't you stay where people are? That's good business. Go where people are going. That's better business. Now, you don't think people are going to Missouri? Plenty of them, Mr. Bradford. Oh, nonsense. That's a jumping off place. Nothing beyond but Mexicans and Indians. I'm sure they won't want your express service. You'll forget the Republic of Texas. Sam Houston and thousands of good Americans are already down there. I'm sorry, Wells. I'm a conservative banker. In my opinion, the Ohio River no, boats... Your, the Ohio River boats are too slow. People will support speed and progress, especially the kind that settle new territory. 
Morning, Mr. Bradford. Oh, well, well, here's our host now. Hello, Bradford. I understand that you're to be the guest of honor. What's this big surprise you've got in store for us? Something good to eat, I hope. I'm starving. You'll have to ask our host, Mr. Wells. He's keeping it a secret. But it'll be good. He's after my bank account again. Come, Wells, what is it? You can tell us now, surely. You'll have to restrain your curiosity a little longer, gentlemen. But I can assure you it'll be worth waiting for. Well, I hope so. Oh, excuse me. Henry. Yes. Friar, I'm glad to see you here. Glad to see you, Bradford, I'm sure. Your charming wife and daughter are well, I hope. Quite well, thank you, sir. Uh, they are driving somewhere at the moment. I'm sorry, ma'am. Adele, my dear. Oh, Nicholas. Never in my life the carriage broke down and this wild man rescued me. Oh, take me to the hotel. Yes, yes, of course, my dear. Come along. Good work, Ramsey. I knew you'd make it on time. Thank you, sir. Come along, gentlemen. The surprise is ready. I'm, I'm sorry to have given you and your mother such a wild ride, man. Oh, don't mention it. Plenty of rest and quiet and generous applications of Annika. I'm sure we'll be as good as ever. Time. Oh, but I did warn you I was in a hurry. That was an understatement. What was in those barrels anyway? Gold? No, oysters. Oysters? Fresh ones, alive, straight from New York. And we brought them. Gentlemen, the surprise is ready. I hope it will prove to my skeptical friend, Mr. Bradford, a banker with a not-too-accessible pocketbook. <laughs> what can be done with fast transportation? Perhaps the way to that elusive pocketbook is through the stomach. So I bring you today, for the first time in the history of Buffalo, Mr. Bradford's favorite dish, fresh oysters on the half shell. Oysters on the half shell? On behalf of my associates, it is my pleasure to announce that very shortly, we will inaugurate a fast overland express service to St. Louis. Oh, yes. They keep me on the go. New York and back nearly every week. Oh, quite a responsibility being be an errand boy for all of Buffalo. Errand boy? Aren't you? Well, perhaps I am, but towns like this in Syracuse have to have some sort of quick service. You see, that's what's back of it. Back of what? Hmm, the whole idea of transportation. It's the lifeblood of the country. Why, if we didn't have some sort of proper communication, our towns and cities would, would stagnate. There'd be no expansion. People wouldn't go anywhere. And it wouldn't be any use taking oysters where there wasn't anybody, would it? Exactly. Oh, I wish you could hear Mr. Wells tell it. I'm sure you've told it very well. And now I must say goodbye. Thank you again for the transportation. Oh, but just a minute. I hope you don't think I'm always such a reckless driver. Could I think that? <laughs> oh, what I mean, I can drive a respectable dog trot when the occasion warrants. Won't you let me prove it to you someday? I scarcely think so. I'm afraid I'll just have to take your word for it. Unless, of course, you happen to be in St. Louis. Why St. Louis? I live there. We're leaving for there tomorrow. For St. Louis? Missouri. On the Mississippi. Goodbye. St. Louis. a saint called Louis. You think he's kind of taken an interest in us and look out for us, but it just seems like he's had something else on his mind lately. Sure is quiet in the off-season. 
You're right. We got to eat. But until the boats start running, it's going to be kind of hard to get work. Of course, in a way, that's a good thing. You know, work is one thing you ought to do in moderation. The trouble about a steady job is it don't give a man much time for serious thinking. Mm. Now, my idea of a good steady job is one where you work about two months out of the year, and then you can sleep and eat and... Uh... Hello, Sam. Is Mr. Fire in the bank? Yes, sir. You know well. Well, about the only thing you can do in a bank is put in or take out, and I can't do neither one, so I reckon I'll wait out here. But what about my last year's furs? You just told us that you sent them to New York. Exactly. To my agents, Wells and Fargo. I'm expecting a draft any day. Yes, yes. But the mails are very uncertain this time of year. Not a boat moving. But they promised to send a messenger overland. Overland? Did I understand you to say overland? Yes, a new service to St. Louis. Oh, preposterous idea, <laughs> if you don't mind my saying so. The whole country between here and Buffalo flooded by spring rains. <laughs> Impossible to get through. It'll be difficult, I dare say. But they won't fail me, I'm sure of that. I'm sorry we can't share your faith in, uh, in, uh, uh, uh... Wells and Fargo. Yes, yes, Wells and Fargo. But I really can't see any way in which we can serve you, Mr. Pryor. Well, I thought you might be able to stretch a point. It's bound to be such a short loan. My record here in this community. Sorry, Mr. Pryor. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Good day. Well, Mr. Pryor. Oh, yes, Hank. I've been turning down a lot of good jobs lately, waiting for your outfit to get started. I know you'd want me and Paul Nee to go along with you like we did last year. There's no one I'd rather have than you, Hank. But I, I may not be sending anyone out this year. You better take the first good job that comes along. You all the same. You tell them. Very well, sir. Any news? Not yet. I thought as much. And we've no reason to suppose there will be any tomorrow nor the day after that. Well, you mustn't say that, my dear. I have great confidence in my agents. Well, I haven't. Anyway, just sitting here waiting isn't doing any good. You ought to be doing something. That's why I asked Talbot to dinner. Well, I don't quite... Uh... I've explained the whole situation to him, and he has most generously all... If I can be of any service to you, sir, advance you any money or... Thank you, my boy, but... My dear Nicholas, I really can't see why you hesitate. It isn't that Talbot were a stranger, why he's almost one of the family. It's a uh, little chilly in here. I'll fetch your shawl, Mother. I'm not the least bit chilly. Besides, I don't like to be interrupted I when know, I... I know, my dear, but suppose we let the matter rest for the moment, eh? Oh, yes, of course. Please tell Mr. Pryor, the Wells Fargo messenger is here. Yes, sir. Will you wait, please? Oh, I can never thank you enough. Oh, it's you. Justine! Well, young man, I certainly am glad to see you. I knew they wouldn't fail me. Your draft, sir. I'm sorry I was a little delayed, but it was hard to get fresh horses. One went lame in the Susquehanna Trail, and there were storms in the mountains, the Mississippi River in flood, and well, I... it sounds like I had a rough trip. A glass of wine wouldn't do you any harm. Well, I... Come along. My dear, I think you've met Mr... Mr... McKay. Yes, we've met. Mr. Talbot Carter, Mr. McKay. 
How do you do? Sir? I'm sure you'll excuse us, gentlemen, if we retire. Good night, Talbot. Good night. Come, Justine. Good night. Well, I'm sure you gentlemen have business to talk over, so I'll run along. Mighty glad to have met you, sir. Good of you to drop in, Talbot. Thank you again. Good night. Come along, Mr. McKay. I declare I can't think what made me do it, except that I was so glad to see him. For Father's sake. A man you don't even know, a stranger to all of us. Not an absolute stranger, Mother. We went driving with him once, remember? Justine, I've no desire to prolong this discussion now. I wish merely to point out to you that in future, I insist upon proper behavior. Yes, Mother. And I suggest that it's time to retire. If you'll forgive me, I'll be running along to the hotel. I am rather tired. Oh, but surely you'll do me the honor of accepting a bed here tonight. Well, you're very kind, but you see, I have other deliveries to make, and early tomorrow I have to establish an office here. Oh, then you must let me help you about that. I'm going to the bank in the morning. Suppose you meet me there about 10. I'm obliged to you, sir. Good night. you leave until I explained how I came to behave in such a forward manner. Why, Miss Pryor, when? When I greeted you so cordially. Well, I didn't notice anything to complain of. Well, I, I only did it because I was relieved. Father had been so worried and... Naturally. And I was grateful. Well, it was only just an errand. Always at your service, Miss Pryor. Well, I hope you understand. I understand that you weren't glad to see me on my own account. Oh, I didn't mean that, Mr. McCain. Perhaps you won't be disappointed to learn that I'm going to open an office here. In St. Louis, Mr. McKay? On the Mississippi. And by the way, I've been practicing. Practicing? Driving in a carriage, very sedately at a trot. Oh. Now, if I can find a horse that's old enough, you know, a nice decrepit old thing that'll just tear along at about three miles an hour. I'm afraid I couldn't, you see, Mother. Oh, but I wasn't asking your mother. Besides, I noticed a nice shady road to the river with trees that hang right down to the water. I'm not at all sure that I could. Mother knew that I was here. What would she say? I tremble to think. Well, then you better go back in so she won't hear you. I will. And, and if she disowns you, I'll drive right up with the old nag and rescue you. <laughs> You're very kind. Good night, Mr. McKay. Good night, Miss Justine. Fixed up, Hank? Yeah, put new shoes on him. You ought to step out mighty proud in them. Looks like you did a good job. Well, I'll tell you now, if there's any one thing I do better than anything else, it's shoeing horses. You know the word got spread around so that when them wild horses out on the plains see me coming, they run up to me and hold their feet out and just beg me to put shoes on them. <laughs> so long, Hank. So long. Hey, Ramsey. I've got something important to take up with you. What is it, Hank? Well, you see, it's like this. I've been on this job gosh knows how long. Now, don't tell me you're quitting again. Well, I ain't quit yet. You always talk me out of it. But, you know, Ramsey, I figure I need a change. This city life's a getting me. You know, I want to get out in the open where I can get some fresh air. Working around a stable like this so long, I'm getting in a rut. You know, there's so many things to do around the stable that I declare if you just don't keep going every minute, your work piles up on you. Gotta meet that boat, Hank. Mr. Wells is on. Well, that's you, this boat's coming. We'll have to wait and quit tomorrow. Welcome to St. Louis, sir. Uh, you're looking very well. Feeling well, Ramsey. 
Why shouldn't I, after all the good work you've been doing this past year? <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that, sir. I thought perhaps you came out here yourself because you weren't satisfied. <laughs> no. I came on account of this trouble down in Mexico. What is the situation there, sir? Latest news is that General Taylor has crossed the Rio Grande. There's a rumor that hostilities have already commenced. And I believe when this war is over, not only Texas, but California may be in the Union. That means emigration. Remember when Oregon came in? They tramped through snows to get there. That's right, sir. Now, with easier travel to California, there'll be settlers by the thousands, and they'll need communication with the East. That's why I'm here. I want to send someone out there to map trails, way stations, for a possible freight route clear through to California. Hmm, that'd be quite a gamble, wouldn't it, sir? Yeah, that's what Fargo says. All my partners think I'm crazy. Well, maybe I am, but I've got a strong feeling about it. I see towns and villages out there sprouting up from nothing. Like mushrooms, overnight. Don't you see, Ramsey? When would you like me to start? Well, it took you long enough to say that. Oh, I've had much experience along those lines, unknown territory, and but if I could get Hank York to go with me. Who's he? Well, he's a man I've had around here doing odd jobs, but he knows the planes as you know the express business. Sounds all right. How soon could you go? I have to have some sort of preparations. Let's see about tomorrow. Hmm. Good. Now, my idea is the best route to take. Oh. What's that? Well, Mr. Pryor sent his carriage for us, sir. You know we're supposed to be at their party now. Do I have to go, Ramsey? I'm not much of a party man. Mm, Mr. Pryor was very insistent, sir. Would I have to dance? <laughs> no. I'll take care of that. Mm, all right. Now about that, uh... <laughs> birthday parties. We were about so high. And you were very enchanting in a pink frock and pigtails. And I'd lost a front tooth the day before. That's the most devastating gap. Made me live. <laughs> and I ate too much ice cream. What a tummy ache you had. Well, that was heartache because you sat with another boy. I remember. He was handsome. A fickle. Married someone only ten years afterwards. But I didn't. And here I am, still waiting, still hoping. Someday you'll begin to take a little interest in me. What nonsense we're talking. I'm not. Do you think it's nonsense for a man to fall in love with you? Oh, Talbot, please. Well, you know I love you, don't you? Well, I, I hoped you were just fond of me. As I am of you, Talbot. But there isn't anyone else, is there? Not another boy. Good evening, Justine. Happy birthday. Good evening. Hello, Talbot. How are you, Ramsey? I believe we were just speaking of you. Forget my nonsense, Justine. My congratulations. Does he know, Justine? Did you tell him? No. No. Oh, Ramsey. <laughs> put an end to all this. Let me tell your mother and father tonight. Oh, we couldn't do that. Mother'd never understand. I know. She wouldn't consider the match suitable. Meaning I'm not nearly good enough for you. She's right. But I don't agree with either of you. But I must tell them before I go away. You're going away? Yes. It was decided tonight I'm going on a trip for Mr. Wells. Oh, is that all? Goodness, you frightened me. Well, you always going away for him to... Buffalo or Cincinnati or... But, Justine, this is different. I'm going to California. California? Yes, I'm leaving tomorrow. Alone? No, I expect to take Hank York with me. Oh, I wasn't thinking of Hank York. Surely you wouldn't go so far away without me. You? Oh, but that wouldn't be possible. It would. We'll be married at once. I don't care what Mother says. It's wonderful of you to want to go. I couldn't think of taking you away from all this and such hardship and danger. Well, if there is danger, I want to be with you. But, Justine, I'd be crazy to think of it. I have work to do. Big work. And then after I've made good, I... Do you mean that... that your work is more important to you than I am? Oh, no, of course not, but... But it's my job, don't you see, Justine? 
You should be glad that I have this chance to do something so important. If you go without me now... Justine! I'll never want to see you again. Never! You've never been to California, have you, Pony? Mm. Well, you missed something. I was out there about three years ago, and it's quite a place. Nice people, too. They got some good ideas about living out there. They got their fiestas and their siestas. Now, personally, I like their siestas the best. Long about 11 o'clock in the morning, they just quit everything and they go to sleep till late in the afternoon. This is all the money I can scrape together, Ramsey. I'd like to have given you more, but I think it'll be enough to see you through. Don't worry about that, sir. I only hope it turns out all right for your sake. It's got to. Can you imagine the laugh Fargo would have on me if we're biting off more than we can chew? I can imagine, mm -hmm. sir. There, my dear, I told you we'd be in time. Come along, Ramsey. I'll see you off. Why, Miss? Ramsey. Well, I didn't mean it. Not a word of it. Please forgive me. Why, there's nothing to forgive. Oh, yes, I, I was mad to think of going with you. But I just couldn't bear the thought of you leaving me, going into danger. But I'll be all right. And perhaps I'll be back again before you've had time to miss me. Oh, I'll wait for you forever. Only, don't make forever too long. Go now. Oh, but let me. Please go. Please. Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye, Ramsey, and good luck. What's the matter? Post office closed? No, I reckon they ain't got enough clerks to sort the mail. Been waiting here long? Well, we are so far. Find the end of the line at the end, partner. How long did it take you to find that out? I reckon the only way you can get a letter here is to break in and take it yourself. Is he lost, too? Yeah. Well, there he is over there, but he doesn't like to be disturbed when he's working. Hey, come on, Debbie. Right. Yeah, let me help you. Thanks. What do you want here? My mail, of course. What kind of service is this? There you go, blaming me. Everybody blames me. Why don't they blame the government at Washington? Them fellas think San Francisco's still a Pueblo. Thousands of folks are coming in here every day, and they all want letters. Folks back east send mail here to everybody on the whole Pacific coast. Look, I want to make you a proposition. I'm from the Hangtown Diggings. Here, read that. You read it. I don't appear to have my reading glasses by me. To the postmaster at San Francisco. That's you. We, the undersigned miners at Hangtown, hereby authorize you to deliver to the bearer, Ramsey McKay. That's me. All mail and packages addressed to us. They are the signatures. Well, seems all right, but you'll have to go out there and wait your turn. But I'm willing to pay the government 25 cents for every letter I can find. Hmm? Yes, and beside that, you get an extra mail clerk free. Well, I don't know. Well, who are you? What's your business? Express agent, Wells and Fargo, St. Louis. Never heard of him. But I don't think you look downright dishonest. 
Rick, now take a chance. Put up your right hand. Solemnly swear you're an American citizen, faithfully follow the duties of post office clerk, United States government, so help you God? I do. Well, you can start right in then. Sign a receipt when you're through. Yes, sir. How are you panning out, Hank? I ain't. I'm only holding on to this claim till I find somebody I hate bad enough to give it to. <laughs> oh, it's too bad. You better come back to work for me. I made over $500 this trip. 500 Sure. Mail and express and carrying dust for the boys at 5%. Better think it over. I'll be needing someone to leave in charge when I go east this fall. East? You mean St. Louis? Well, of course. Where else did you expect me to go? Oh! <laughs> How much is it? Pinch of dust, same as anyone else. Cheap enough. Hey, what do you take for those newspapers? Ten dollars. I'll take it. I'll give you a dollar for it when you're through reading it. Peter oh. Bellinger! That's me, that's me. Hey, come back here with that oh. pinch of dust. Oh. Ten ounces, six penny weight, Abe. That's right. You want this deposited in the Baldwin Bank? Yeah, if you will. So you're pulling out, eh? Yeah, guess we got here too late. Good claims are all taken. If there ever were any good claims around this place. <laughs> well, looks like those fellows over there had found some. Here's your receipt, Abe. Thanks, McKay. My name is Trimble, Dan Trimble. What can I do for you, Dan? I understand that you can send money back east for a fellow. That's right. Where do you want it sent? My hometown, St. Louis. St. Louis? Well, we have an office there. How long have you been out here? About six months. Any luck? Pretty fair. Well, at least it's better than farming back in Missouri. <laughs> I guess so. Fourteen ounces, three pennyweight. There's no chance of that being lost on the way, is there? Oh, no. I only take it as far as San Francisco. San Francisco? Yes. I buy a draft there, and then our office in St. Louis cash it, see? Yes, I, I see. Who do you want it sent to? Um, the same as this letter. Miss Lucy Dorset. We're engaged. This is her picture. Oh, she's very pretty. Oh, yes. I certainly wish she was here. Well, why don't you send for her? Oh, I couldn't think of letting her come out all this way alone. But Mr. Wells has just written me that a new associate of ours, John Butterfield, is planning on bringing special parties out here by way of Panama. Women, too? Sure. Of course, the trip uh, across the Isthmus wouldn't be very pleasant. The rest of the way by boat. When would she get here? Well, sometime this fall. Bring her out. Your bride's as good as here. This will more than cover expenses. You boys have one on the house? Well, no thanks. I guess we'll be drifting along. Good luck. Thanks. done for. Uh, what about that other bag on him? No, that's only mail. Come on.
Well, Pony, we ain't got any money, but it won't cost anything to take a look. Come on. <clears throat> you done an awful lot of talking in your sleep last night. If I didn't already know you was interested in Miss Pryor, I sure would have my suspicions now. I didn't get a wink of sleep all night, afraid I might miss something interesting. I'm plumb wore out. But I'm glad to see you're back in your right mind again today. Ramsey! You've got to make tracks out of here quick. They're on their way up to get you. Who is? The boys. They've had a meeting, and they don't think you were held up and robbed. They think that you Thanks, Trimble. No shooting, Hank. Well, suppose they started. What's the trouble, boys? McKay, we don't swallow that hold-up story of yours. Now, unless you want to tell us where you hid that dust. We ain't had no robbers in Hangtown. Not since we hung that half-breed a year ago. I'm sorry you doubt my word, boys, but I'm glad you came. Saves me the trouble of coming down to you. Here, Abe, read that out good and loud. Oh, I can't read, McKay. You know I can't. Well, I can. Golden and Company Bank, San Francisco. Certificate of deposit, $4,240 to the credit of Ramsey McKay, agent for the Wells Fargo Company of St. Louis. Well, you see, there's more than enough to pay all losses. You mean, you're going to make good? Certainly. Why else would I have come back? Reckon we was a little hasty, fellas. I'm going to San Francisco tomorrow. Any two of you can come along. I'll pay full amounts on all receipts that you hold. Well, thanks, Ramsey. By the way, I'll be back here doing business next week the same as usual. <laughs> Small boats heading for us. Hmm. They always come out to get the Eastern newspapers. I let the first man aboard buy them for a dollar apiece. Yeah. They bring fancy prices at the diggers. <laughs> that tall fellow always seems to be the lucky one. Why, that's our man, Ramsey. <laughs> First again, I see. I've got 50 for you this trip. 50? Is that all? Oh, I could use 100. Mr. Wells! Well, Ramsey. Oh, I didn't expect to find you aboard, sir. I thought I'd give you a little surprise and moral support. I reckoned you needed it after that setback in Hangtown. So I managed to scrape up some more capital. At least enough to pay the rent for a while. Rent? You mean you're going to open an office here? Why not? Oh, Ramsey? I want you to meet John Butterfield. Mr. Butterfield? How are you? I've heard a lot about you, McKay. They say our friend Wells here gets wild ideas and you make them come to pass. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Fargo. Oh, Mr. Wells. Oh, Ramsey, the bride you ordered. Safe and sound, handled with care. Oh, you've all been so kind to me. I, I can't thank you enough, but... But where's Dan? Oh, he's coming out on another boat, miss. He was so excited I wouldn't let him come in mine for fear he'd upset it. <laughs> Lucy! <laughs> well, Ramsey, be some time before we come to anchor, and we've lost to talk over. Let's go below. Do you mind, John? No, no, no. Right this way. Excuse me, sir. First, we want to talk a little bit about your future. 
Oh, plenty of time for that, sir. Go in. Mother, how did she ever let you come way out here alone? I don't think she'll ever get over it. But Father understood he was wonderful. The instant we heard Mr. Wells was coming and bringing Lucy, we decided to ship two brides instead of one. Brides? I can go back if you don't want me. Want you? <laughs> Only the anchor. You're here to stay, darling. <laughs> We'll be married at once. Here we are. I'm sorry, dear, but I'm afraid this is the best place there is in town. Well, best is none too good for us, is it? <laughs> Thank you, dear. I want you to meet my wife. Delighted, Mrs. McKay. Right up this way, dear. Now remember, Wayne, I want you to look after Miss McKay while I'm gone. Look after? I mean, take good care of her. Keep going, Sally. Oh, keep God like a soldier. Me sorry. That's right. Well, I'm on my way. Goodbye, dear. I wish you didn't have to go this time. So do I. But you know, ever since Mr. Wells left, things haven't been going so good. Well, last month, we hardly paid expenses. Well, how could that be? Mm, competition, lots of it. Firms like Slade and Oliver cutting in. That's why I've got to get out in the gold camps and get new customers, build up goodwill. Yes, I suppose so, Ramsey. Only... Well, I don't want to interfere with your business, dear, but I was counting on you so being oh, with me. And... I won't be away from you then. I'll be back. Besides, Mrs. Andrews will be here with you. And the doctor. But it's you I want. You won't fail me. You will be back in time. Of course I will. Remember, Larry, you can't sit in an office and expect business to come to you. You gotta get out and dig it up, see? I'll wear my boots, sir. That's the talk. Oh, pick up our mail. I might as well take it down with me. Howdy, Ramsey. Quite a stranger in Hangtown these days. That's right, Abe. I hear you got married and everything. Yeah. All settled down like a native son. Except when I'm traveling. <laughs> Here you are, Ramsey. Thanks. Let me live and let me die. Well, Ramsey, Hank, I ought to be shaking hands with you. What's the idea of you coming around here and not looking me up? Well, I was in kind of a hurry this time, Hank. I was going to look you up next trip. I won't be here next trip. What? I'm all wore out. I've been sitting up there on that doggone digging for months, trying to hatch out a couple of nuggets. And I ain't had no more luck than a duck with a doorknob. Are you quitting again? Yep, I never worked so doggone hard in all my... Didn't we, Pawnee? Mm. Well, now the Pawnee wants a rest. Maybe you'll come back to work for me. No, me and Pawnee are heading for the plains. Back to St. Louis, I reckon. Oh. Well, anyhow, we can ride a ways together. Come on.
I'm sorry I can't make you change your mind, Hank. Oh, Ramsey, as much as I'd like to see Miss Pryor, begging your pardon, your wife. By the way, how is she? Oh, as well as can be expected. I'm rather anxious to get home. That's why I cut out two of the camps. You don't mean she's ailing. Well, not exactly. Ramsey, wait! What is it? It's Lucy. Come quick, please. What's wrong, Dan? My wife, 10 days ago, I sent to Sacramento for a doctor, but nobody came. I don't know what she's going to do, Ramsey. Great, gee, Jose. Well, isn't there a woman around the camp anywhere? I don't remember seeing one around these parts. Now, wait a minute. There's a squaw up at the Degas. Pawnee! Kabwele Hina, me and Eek. He'll get her. She's got a papoose of her own. Good. But can't you do something now? Can't you do something? She can't stand it. Put I can't. yourself together. We've got work to do. Hank, build a fire. We've got to have a lot of hot water. You help him. Take it easy, boy. Take it easy. I know it's kind of hard to understand why things happen the way they do. Sometimes it's quite a spell before we can understand it. But after all, it ain't as though the little lady's gone and left you all alone. There's the baby. And I kind of think she'd like to have you pull yourself together. And do all you can for the little fellow. But she was afraid. She knew she was going to die. She told me so. She, she even made me promise to send the baby back to her folks in St. Louis. Well, what can I do? She's gone. And the baby will die now. I know it will. Little fella seems to be doing all right now. And I don't see any reason why he shouldn't go on doing so. But if he stays here without proper care, and I promise. I don't see why you can't keep your promise. But that's impossible. I can't. Hank, you want to go to St. Louis, and I want you to work for me. Maybe we can kill two birds with one stone. What are you driving at? I want you to talk to that squaw's husband. Ask him if they'll go to St. Louis with you. Tell him we'll pay him well. Who, me? I ain't taking on nothing like that. Say, what are you trying to rope me into? Tell them. Lo yama scuta nita. Yoma no kikula kesa. Ramsey, you mean that... Wells Fargo will ship anything, Dan. A nurse and a baby won't stop us. If they consent, your baby goes overland to St. Louis. Oh, but they must. Blow your ma. Skeet off. Hank, tell, tell him I'll pay anything. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. No ma. No keek you la. Kesa. Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo. Womola. Skeet Wells Fargo. Justine, is she all right, Mrs. Andrews? The doctor's still with her. But don't you want to look at your own child? She'll be all right. But she kept calling for you. She took it pretty hard when you didn't come. Justine, look at me, please. 
events in the history of California was the granting by Congress on September 15th of a contract for the Overland Mail. Did you read this part? It is reported that Ramsey McKay, local Wells Fargo manager, will personally take charge of laying out the route. I'm glad to hear that. He's a good man. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to California. Yes, now we can get our mail before it's ancient history. Sure. <laughs> about the Overland? That was Thank you, Cordelia. That was lovely. Girls, have you heard the news? The Overland Mail Contract is signed. Oh, 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 you see, it says Mr. McKay is to be in charge. Oh, how exciting. Wonderful for Ramsey. And Mr. Wells has arrived to discuss plans with him. He'll have to establish a hundred way stations between here and Missouri. Why, that means you'll be away for over a year. A year? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Wells. It isn't that I don't want to go, but you see, well, I promised Justine I wouldn't leave San Francisco. But, man alive, why all our plans have led up to this. We've counted on you. I'm sorry. You've already made a survey of the very route we have to take. Good heavens, man, this is no time to talk of quitting. Why, this service is needed badly. Some people here would like to break away from the Union and make California a republic. Texas and the South are grumbling and talking secession. The North thinks it has a right to run the country. I know all that. A proper sir. communication I'm will bring sorry. about... I'd rather not talk about it anymore. Hank knows the route as well as I do. Why not put him in charge? Now, wait a minute. I don't want to tie myself down for a whole year to one job. My mind's made up. I don't understand you, Ramsey. This isn't like you. Why not think it over? Talk with Justine. I have to leave on the next boat for Panama. If you change your mind before then, let me know. seem to enjoy it. We read from the legend of Sleepy Hollow and Cordelia sang. Couldn't stop her, I suppose. <laughs> How'd the baby stand it? Oh, they made such a fuss over, they tired her out. She's still asleep. Well, I'm starved. Wayne got something good to eat? Your favorite, roast beef. Fine. Why didn't you bring Mr. Wells home to dinner? Oh, uh, he had a meeting at the hotel tonight. About the Overland mail contract, I suppose. You going to the meeting? Me? No. Nothing to do with me. Paper says you ought to be in charge of laying out the route. Oh, no. Hank York, most likely. I thought Mr. Wells wanted you to. Oh, we discussed it. But I couldn't see giving up a year of my life eating dust and alkali. But a field and Hank can handle it. Yes, of course, dear. Want to freshen up before dinner? I laid out a change for you. Thanks, I will. 
Be right down. I know. But after all, it's only for a year. Oh, Justy. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Ormsby of the New York Herald. So? He's going through with you as special correspondent. Well, glad to have you, Mr. Ormsby. I hope you enjoy the trip. Hope we all do, Mr. Butterfield. Mr. Ormsby is sending off a letter to his paper before you leave, and he'd like to get the exact route. Certainly. But we'll need my map. Come on over to the call. Oh, thank you. Well, Nicky, you've grown to be quite a young man. Thank you. It was very nice of you to come down and see us off, sir. Why, well, we wouldn't have missed it for the world, would we, my dear? I really came to inquire after Justine. Justine's very well, ma'am. And her baby? Alice is fine. You ought to come out and see her. Justine misses you. You may give her my love. Now, here we are in Tipton. Starting westward, we cross the Ozark Mountains, swing down through Texas, along the Pecos, through El Paso, Tucson, then up through Los Angeles into San Francisco. A distance of 2,600 miles. And how long has it taken you to make your preparations, Mr. Butterfield? A little over a year. Incredible. Uh, what can you tell me about the way stations? Well, there's about 120 of them. Some of them are 20 miles apart, others as much as 60. Ramsey McKay can tell you more about that. He supervised the building of most of them. Oh, by the way, when does the coach from the west start? Leave San Francisco today. If we hold a schedule, we should pass each other in about 10 days. Hi, Mr. Carr. Hello, Hank. You want this, Mr. Butterfield? Oh, yeah. You better put this on. Oh, but I, uh, you might find more to write about than you're figuring on. You ain't going with us, are you? Yes, yes. Well, I hope your hair is fastened down good. We're about ready, Mr. Butterfield. Ramsey, let's get there. Coming up, Mr. Butterfield. Remember, John, the contract says 25 days or cancellation. You know what that would mean to me. And to me, it's 25 or bust.
Indians, all right. Must have been a complete surprise. I knew every one of those boys. Never thought I'd be burying them. with Ed Slocum. Howdy, Mr. Butterfield. Oh, yeah. Didn't expect to meet you here, sir. Well, two days ahead of schedule. That's a coming. Station's all clear ahead, sir? Yeah. Well, all except number four. Wiped out by Indians. That's bad. All clear back of us, but take it easy on the Tejon Pass. That'll be your job, Ramsey. Me? Yep. You're on your own now. But I don't understand, sir. Well, I'm heading back east with Ed. I want to relieve Mr. Wells' mind. You know, he seemed a little bit worried we weren't going to get through. <laughs> but they're expecting you in San Francisco, sir. Big reception. Ah, I'll get mine to St. Louis. Come on, I smell bacon and coffee. I bet you're plenty hungry, too. Yes, Bye, I speech of Lincoln. He certainly puts the issue squarely before the country. I agree with him. We don't want slavery in California. 
I'd like to see him president. Well, with this Pony Express, good or bad news comes much quicker. Ah, but that's all the pervading that's coming out there. country divided, even away out here. I had no idea there were so many southern sympathizers. Now do you still think the South won't secede? Mother said in the last letter they would if Breckenridge wasn't elected. I can't believe it. That would mean only one thing. Carrying gold bullion to Washington. Why, I... The Confederate States of America are taking it over. We'll give you a receipt in full, redeemable, at the end of the war. Sergeant. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. President, would you care to see the Wells Fargo man before he returns to California? Certainly, Mr. Chase. Have him come in. I've already given him his instructions. President, we'll see you, sir. President, this is Mr. McKay. Mr. McKay, you can readily understand why these seizures of gold by the Confederacy must be stopped. Yes, sir. We don't want to prolong this war a day longer than necessary. The South is fighting a brave fight and using every means to avert defeat. We have thousands of men in the field who must be fed, clothed, and paid. Every dollar in the sub-treasury in San Francisco is needed for that purpose. Your company must get it here. We'll do our best, sir. Thank you, Mr. McKay. Good day, Mr. President. Good day. You better wait for me. Yes, sir. Okay. Will you tell Miss Pryor that I have a message for her from Miss Justine? Oh, how is Miss Justine? Just fine, thank you, Ben. Yes, sir. Will you please wait in there? Sorry, sir, but Miss Pryor won't see you. 
Well, did you tell her that Miss Justine asked me to see her, that it was very important? Yes, sir, I done told her all that. But she said she didn't want to see you. You see, sir, Miss Pryor took it mighty hard when Master Nick died. Nick? Hey, we got the news last week. He was killed down in Georgia. Ramsey. Mr. Pryor, I didn't know. I just learned of your loss. Yes, Ramsey. Our only boy. Mighty hard. I heard you were in Washington. Yes, I was, sir. I just stopped off on my way back to San Francisco. Well, I'm glad you did. Come, let's sit down. Well, thank you, but I just came with a message from Justine and Mrs. Pryor. I understand now why she refuses to see me. I, I'm sorry to have intruded. Oh, but you haven't. You haven't. I, you just give me the message and I'll tell her. Well, you see, Justine misses you both. When our first baby was born, I know she regretted not having her mother with her. She hoped that this time we... Adele, my dear, Ramsey was just saying that Justine needs you. My daughter wishes to see me. Why doesn't she come here to her own home? I'm afraid it would be impossible for her to travel in her present condition. She wants you to be with her when the baby... Baby? She begs you to come. When do you intend to leave? Tomorrow. Very well. I shall be ready. Mommy? Daddy didn't say goodnight to me. He's busy. What's he doing downstairs with those men? Hush now, let you go to sleep. Well, he's finally gone to sleep. Justine, I came out here because you wanted me. I allowed nothing to keep me away. Now I don't think you need me anymore, so I shall go home on the next boat. But, Mother, why? How can you ask me to stay in this house with what's going on downstairs? Your husband, those men, shutting themselves in that room. But after all, this is his house. What are they doing? Have you ever asked yourself why he was called to Washington? What orders he received there? Well, I can't believe that Ramsey would... Because you're afraid to face the truth. Afraid to find out. Are you sure about this new route, Ramsey? Quite sure. This is the biggest shipment we ever made. Over two million in gold. Correct? Quite right, Mr. Wells. Nothing must happen to it. That's why we're going farther north, into Colorado. Now, we plan to cross the Rockies at Fort Garland, down to Pueblo Creek, then through the valley and south to Old Man Hub's Cutoff. Yeah, that'll bring us out north of the Arkansas River into Kansas. That sounds good to me. How about the wagons? I figure that we ought to have... Ramsey, I must ask you and your friends to leave. Do your plotting and scheming in your office where it belongs, not in my home. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Well, what was it? You're right. They're planning on sending more gold through to the Union Army. Yes. To buy more ammunition, more bullets to kill boys like your own brother. Yes. Yes, and we could stop it. We could stop it. I heard what they said, the route they're going to take. Oh, if we could only get word through. We can. We'll find a way.
I'm sorry, dear. I didn't realize how you felt. I just simply didn't think. I want to apologize. I'm, I'm going to the hotel now with Mr. Wells. I'll be leaving in the morning, perhaps before you're awake. Leaving? Yes, I, I'm going east. Oh, you must. You mustn't go. Ramsey, why should you help to kill men and boys who've never done anything to harm you? We didn't start this war. The best thing we can do is to finish it as soon as we can. No matter how many are murdered, like Nikki. I know, dear. I wish we could end it all this minute, but we can't. We've got to go on. Besides, I've given my word. Goodbye, dear. Ramsey, if you leave now, knowing how I feel, I won't be here when you come back. I can't change my plans. Goodbye. Let me live and let me die where I ain't been before. Oh! Lieutenant, detail two men with flag of truce. Confederates, all right. There's something queer about this. I shouldn't wonder. Looks like they want a powwow, Ramsey. They're coming under a white flag. Hold your fire, man. Wait here, Hank. Your mistake, Captain. We're not an army train. I'm quite sure of that, Ramsey. Talbot. Well, it's pretty far north for you, isn't it? Not when I have business. Must be important business. You're taking chances. The gold you're carrying is very important to the Confederate States, and I must ask you to surrender it. There'll be no surrender. I'm warning you, we've got you outnumbered. Can we avoid bloodshed? If you don't attack us. I'm sorry, Ramsey. I am too, Talbot. Going through, Hank. Double formation. Troops, attention. Prepare for action. Take your places, boys. Double formation.
prisoners? Any of them get away? No. They wouldn't quit. They fought to the last man. How are you feeling, Ramsey? I'm feeling all right. You know, Pawnee's done for. It's going to seem mighty funny without him around. I found these on the captain. Mr. Carter, thought you might want to send them to his folks. Thanks, Hank. We camp here for the night. See if they get a decent burial. Sure. I wish you put all those thoughts behind you. But I should never have left him. Come. The children need you. How's them juleps, sir? Fine, Ben. Ah, that's one thing that hasn't changed. How do you feel, Ben? About the same, sir. Except my misery is getting a little worse. Yes, getting a little worse. Nicholas, I hear your son-in-law's in town. Yes, came for this amalgamation celebration. Oh, whatever they call it. Have you seen him yet? That company has made great strides. Still doing big things. Yes, took over the Pacific Express, joined up with the American Express Company. They've made Ramsey a vice president. I'll see him tonight at the stockholders' dinner. Grandpa! Mother says it's time for you to come in. Yes, yes, of course. Shall I see you the same time tomorrow, Nicholas? Absolutely. We've got to finish this game sometime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Ramsey. Here he is, Mother. Why did you have to send for me? Just when I was winning. Remember, you promised you'd rest before you went out. Come along, darling. Mammy's waiting for you. I wish you were coming tonight. I don't like going without you. It's awkward. You know that's impossible. But I thought if, if you could only see each other, things might be different. You haven't written to him lately, have you? Not since Mother died. That letter came back like all the others. I can't understand it. Ramsey didn't seem to be that kind. Is there anything you haven't told me? Anything I ought to know? No, Father. You'd better get dressed. So you see, the world became our oyster through an oyster. For the next day, Mr. Bradford loaned me the money that started the Overland service from Buffalo to St. Louis. In the old days, we had one important rule, get there. I can tell you that Ramsey McKay never broke that rule. There are some things about him that would be better said by his close companion for many years. I call upon Hank York. Well, I thought 
that me and Ramsey had been in some pretty tight spots in our travels, but they didn't bother me half as much as the tight spots in this store suit. <laughs> But all joking aside, the old Wells Fargo Company sure done its part in opening up the West. Some people go so far as to say that it helped keep the United States united. But now we got trains running across the country, and we got the telegraph. Now, some folks seem to think that the telegraph is helping keep the country united. But I'd kind of hate to think that these United States were just held together by a bunch of wires. <laughs> of course, I suppose it took a certain amount of brains to figure even that out. Yes, sir, what's been done took a lot of brains and luck. And part of the luck was that Mr. Wells was able to get men like Ramsey to carry out his fine idea. And that's the reason they thought they wasn't doing enough for him tonight, just feeding him. So they told me to give him this pretty present. It's what they call a plaque. And it's made out of silver from the Comstock load and gold from the old Hangtown diggings where Ramsey first shipped gold out of. It shows two hands clasped in friendship. And it's supposed to be the joining together of the East and the West. But you know, I'd kind of like to think that one of them hands was mine and the other one was Ramsey's. Because I'm awful proud that I could be the side partner of one of the finest and the squarest. I don't seem to be able to talk anymore. I guess the collar's too tight. Here, Ramsey, take the darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was, and they left me right here. I hope you don't mind. Oh, not at all. I'm glad they did. It's, uh, it's warm tonight, isn't it? Excuse me. Can I order you something? Oh, no, no, thank you. Well, sit down, won't you? I can't get used to it. Seeing you grown up like this. See, you're, you're 17, aren't you? I will be, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Don't you remember, Father? Of course. Of course. Your birthday. Well, I'll have to get you something. Oh, you could give me a wonderful present. Tell me what it is. I'm having a birthday party tomorrow. I came especially to ask you, would you come? Why, I... You see, all my friends know that you're here, so I thought that you might be able to. Well, I'm afraid, you see, I I'm leaving tomorrow. Oh. Well, couldn't you stay over another day? No, uh, my plans are made. Don't you want to come? Oh, yes, but... Then you will. I'm sorry. I can't. Mother never told me why you aren't together. But now I... Oh, I didn't think you could be so cruel.
Thank you. Father said you're going back to California. I was, but I don't know. I must see you alone. We must put them behind us, Justine. Yes, Richard. So I... I want you to destroy this. I should have destroyed it years ago. It's been like a canker. Where did you get this? Well, we found it on Talbot Carter's body. But I didn't send it. I threw it away, I remember, because Mother was standing right... Your mother. Oh, Justine. Oh, Mother! Come along, we're going to cut the cake. All right, dear. 